In today's video, we have a lot of information to cover, including much more information on the situation with the Buffalo Sabres. It appears as though they may have fired as many as 30 staff members today. Uh, there's more hope for a potential Canadian city to be one of the NHL hub cities when they return to play. And we have some offices and rumors concerning the Edmonton Oilers, the Vancouver Canucks, and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Could former Leaf Tyler Bozak return? We'll discuss all that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here, Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have a lot to cover this evening. It's been a very interesting newsworthy day. And we're going to kick things off with the biggest news of the day, and that's what's going on with the Buffalo Sabres. Now, of course, earlier today, I put out a video discussing the firing of General Manager Jason Botterill, and I did indicate in that video that other staff members were rumored to be being let go, but a lot more information has come out in the last number of hours since that was originally announced and released. Uh, and we have a lot more information. It looks as though they may have fired as many as about 30 employees from the hockey operations department. I mean, during the uh, press conference that followed uh, the announcement of Botterill being let go, uh, the owners, Kim and Terry Pagula, did announce that hockey operations needed to get more efficient and a lot leaner, and they weren't kidding. So here's a long list of Sabres front office people that are apparently let go as well with Botterill today. Uh, both of his assistant general managers, Randy Sexton and Steve Greeley, the entire coaching staff from the American Hockey League team, uh, including head coach Chris Taylor, who appeared to be doing a pretty good job of making some uh, good improvements over the last few years. That was a little bit confusing. Director of Amateur Scouting was let go, Ryan Jankowski. No, he would have been basically one of the top ones involved with prepping for the NHL draft. So that certainly doesn't come at a great time. And of course, with the NHL draft being pushed back this year, they do have more time uh, to kind of get re-prepared here, but certainly a big role for the team this summer. They let go of development coaches Chris Barch and Mike Komasarek. And as far as we can tell here by various reports, pretty much all of their amateur scouts. Now, there could be a couple of amateur scouts that were kept on, but they pretty much clean house in that entire department. So as we've got information here from Elliot Friedman, Lance Lasowski, and others uh, covering this Buffalo situation, uh, like I said, it's approximately 30 people all together. So when they said they were making the hockey operations department much leaner, they certainly were not kidding. Obviously, Kevin Adams has a big daunting job in front of him uh, earlier when he taking over as general manager that job alone and it's you know, normal duties is going to be a daunting task considering where the Sabres have been so they're now going to be rebuilding from a rebuild which has basically lasted the entire time of the duration of ownership that the Pagulas have owned the Sabres since 2011 one thing's been consistent during their time is owning that franchise and that is that there really isn't any consistencies at all uh, they have nothing but change they've now will be on their fourth general manager and their sixth head coach during that time so yes there is a common denominator here and i am pointing the finger at them a little bit they need to take ownership of the fact that i'm not real confident in their abilities to run this franchise at this point but obviously they're building it from the ground up at this point they have a lot of faith in kevin adams but the fact that they didn't even do an external gm search is concerning to me i mean i understand they know adams well he's worked with the organization for quite a while in various roles and they trust him and you know i guess we'll give them the benefit of the doubt to see how we can do here but uh still I, I don't know i'm just not really sure what the sabers can come out of this it's going to take a while here to really rebuild this he's going to have a lot of people to uh, to find replacements for clearly they need a coaching staff the american hockey league uh, is he going to get any assistant general managers i mean that uh, when that was asked to ownership it was a little bit non-committal i mean they need to have at least one assistant gm so they can have somebody run their ahl team uh, at the very least they need some scouts i mean obviously some scouts won't be overly needed for the next little bit um, but still like there's just a lot of question marks uh, how lean is this hockey operations department going to be uh, it basically came down to a lot of the financial decisions uh, being run here by the Sabres it looks like the ownership really wanted to cut back on spending uh, and Jason Botterill uh, seemed to have some disagreement on the philosophies around that and that very well might have played a big role here uh, in his dismissal as well as everything else that's happened today it was only three weeks ago that they basically said that the Jason Botterill's job was safe and that they really weren't going to be making any significant changes and now here we are today of course I know in the interim we've heard Jack Eichel come out with his frustrations about losing and ever since Eichel made those comments there's been a lot of talk well, could Eichel be traded 
what's going to happen. You know what? Obviously, they're not going to be trading their top star hockey player. They want to build around him, and they need to have some people who can do that. I mean, Jason Botterill uh, certainly did not do a great job. He lost some trades, especially that Ryan O'Reilly deal was not good. Uh, some you know not so favorable signings. I uh, obviously needed to make some more trades this year and just weren't able to get it done. So I do agree that they need a change. It's just this is a pretty drastic measure. I'm not really sure we've seen anything like this before uh, in recent memory where uh, an NHL ownership team has come through here and just completely cleaned house with its entire hockey operations department. So I guess we'll see what will happen with all these jobs in the future and who they hire as replacements. It was being reported as well that new GM Kevin Adams had to make all these phone calls and notify these people of their dismissal. That to me is a pretty shitty job by ownership. I really think that they should have been the ones to handle that given the fact that they these people didn't report into Adams before. So, uh, you know, that part I'm not real fond of. I think ownership should have had more of a hand in notifying the people that were being dismissed. But let me know your thoughts on the Sabres dismissals here. This is a pretty crazy day. Another dark day in Buffalo. Do you have confidence in the owners and Kevin Adams be able to get this thing back on track? Let me know your thoughts down below and we'll discuss further. <laughs> Now, as I mentioned as well, we have several other things to discuss today, as well as the potential of the Canadian city being one of the hubs for the NHL's return to play. We had comments today from Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who did confirm that Canada as a country is very much open to the NHL return and one of their cities being named in the hub. Obviously, the three cities that are in play here are Toronto, Vancouver, and Edmonton. And he did mention as well in his comments that the provincial government and where those cities lie would have to be involved in that decision process as well as the local health authorities, but certainly open to it, which means that they very well could waive that right for players to isolate when coming into the country as long as they stay within their uh, hockey bubble or you know whatever they're being set up with there. So uh, obviously, those three Canadian cities are very much in the mix. I know the NHL seemed pretty fond of the idea of having one of their hub cities being Canada. So a great step forward to making that happen. Quick update as well on the Vancouver Canucks. Another report from Rick Dollywall talking about a Canucks possibly re-signing defenseman Nikita Triamkin, who could return from the KHL to re-sign an NHL contract for the coming 2020-2021 season. Uh, there was a lot of reports a number of weeks ago that he was close to signing with Vancouver, and it very well could happen. Of course, with a lot of the uncertainty around the salary cap, that is a big part of the reason why it hasn't happened as of yet. But he's reporting now that uh, Triamkin is likely looking at a one-year deal somewhere between between two and three million dollars and that might prove problematic for the Canucks as much as they might be interested in bringing him back uh, obviously they're going to have their own cap situations we've talked about it at length here the past few days uh, they have some big time UFAs they want to bring back including goalie Jacob Markstrom and Tyler Toffoli they have another defenseman and Chris Tanev who there does seem to be interest in returning uh, as well they've got some RFAs that need to be signed and they don't have a ton of cap space and until they really get further clarification on what the cap is going to be next year and it's not re really clear exactly when they're going to have that this very well might be a move that they very well may not be able to make after all even though there is interest but uh, it is possible as well we could see the player maybe hold on a little bit longer just to see um, you know there's obviously no huge rush but at some point they're going to want some certainty for next year maybe he won't return after all I don't know but certainly no guarantee that the Canucks can get this done at this point considering the money he's apparently looking for now, as I mentioned as well, I want to talk about the Edmonton Oilers and a potential return for Jesse Pugliarvi. He's a player who's been surrounded by NHL trade rumors for a long time, really the entire season since he sat out and basically demanded a trade. But recently we saw comments that he might be softening his stance and might be open to a return to Edmonton after all. There is some talk recently that maybe Pugliarvi might be having a change of heart for a variety of reasons. Maybe he's kind of seen the fact that maybe he was given some bad advice and shouldn't have pushed so hard for a trade. Maybe he should have been given this new regime in Edmonton more of an opportunity to work with him and see what they can do. Edmonton's going to be tied up against the cap like many NHL teams. They're going to need some really you know good solid contracts of good value to really fill out their bottom six and uh, Jesse Pugliarvi might be a prime player who could fill one of those roles. I mean he had a good year over in Finland. If he can get that confidence back and start developing like they thought he would when they first drafted him, he could very well prove to be a good commodity to join this team. This qualifying contract for the NHL would get him just under 900000 so obviously a good deal. He could sign a one-year contract and then become a restricted free agent with arbitration rights afterwards, so uh, he could certainly you know kind of renegotiate and look at his future beyond that after the uh, kind of trial, I guess, after one year back in Edmonton, but if he can play anywhere close to how he played in Finland, 
I certainly think his value would be on the rise. And if things are progressing for him, then he can maybe get a bigger role with the team, get a longer term contract. Uh, or if they do decide to part ways, at least he'll have more of an NHL exposure uh, with a, you know, more relevant experience that other NHL teams might be uh, able to consider when making the acquisition. But it was reported as well in recent reports that the Oilers never really received much of anything close to what they consider a fair offer for Jesse Pugliarvi at all. I mean, there really wasn't a lot of interest. I think many NHL teams were kind of sitting back to see how this was going to play out, see how we did over in Finland, and kind of take a wait-and-see approach. Um, but there really wasn't a ton of interest. I know we heard a couple of rumblings about maybe a swap with other teams about other prospects that were somewhat you know, in similar situations, like Leah Anderson in New York. And it is believed there were some talks around that, but nothing that their Oilers really were uh, anxious about or really thought was a fair deal. So I guess we'll see, but it's looking more and more likely that Jesse Pugliari just very well might end up in Edmonton after all. Next up, I want to take a look at another article from Luke Fox of Sportsnet where he was asking a mailbag article, could the Toronto Maple Leafs look to bring back former center iceman Tyler Bozak, who of course uh, left via free agency a couple years ago and signed with the St. Louis Blues. Of course, Bozak's had some tremendous experience winning the Stanley Cup last year. Of course, the Blues are another top team in this year. Very well could make a run at a second Stanley Cup. You just never know. Uh, but obviously, his one year left on his contract at $5 million. And obviously, the Blues are looking to move some salary out there's no doubt about that this offseason they're going to have to cut some salary if they have any hope in retaining captain Alex Petrangelo they also got to sign RFA defenseman Vince Dunn um, and there's certainly you know, only a limited number of players that they would probably prefer to trade and it's been rumored for some time that Tyler Bozak's name has been out there on the trade market and that the Blues very well could shop him this summer uh, once we hit the offseason and they could very well find himself off to another team. He does have a modified no trade clause where he has a 10 team no list that he can block a trade to, but it certainly leaves plenty of other teams to talk to. And I'm sure that based on his previous experience in Toronto, if he were traded to go there, that that would not be an issue for him. If he's being moved, I would assume Toronto would be one of his preferred destinations if he was able to go back there. But of course, you know, he's an aging veteran at this point. His the contract is certainly a part of the issue why he's in the rumor mill to begin with. I don't think it's anything that the Blue are unhappy with him with the role he provides for like a third line kind of player the last couple of years he's been 35 to 40 points and Bozak certainly provides a good leadership role for them great on face-offs you know I don't think overall that they're really unhappy with him it's just that they need to shed salary but at the same time this could prove problematic for Toronto I do think that the Leafs would be interested in having a veteran like him play as the center ice position in the bottom six it's not clear yet if Jason Spezza will return next year I mean he signed a one-year league minimum deal and after Sheldon Keefe took over as head coach, he certainly did a lot better. And Vero could sign another somewhat cheap contract to return with the Maple Leafs. But as much as they might be open to the idea, I just don't know if money is going to be able to make this happen. Uh, clearly, Tyler Bozak with a $5 million cap hit would prove to be expensive. I don't see the Maple Leafs moving out a young player like a Janssen or a Kapanen uh, or a Kerfoot or any of those guys for a one year of Tyler Bozak. Uh, I just don't see it happening. The Blues would have to retain salary. When I've seen this being discussed on the article, I was like, you know what, I would like to give my two cents on this, but really don't see it happening. Now, if Tyler Bozak was becoming a free agent and they needed a third or fourth line center they could sign for a cheap amount of money, uh, then he might be an option that way. But I don't see them really giving up much of anything in that regard. But they're really the Blues are looking to shed salary. They wouldn't be able to take much back. They'd have to retain a little bit of his money. Uh, and at the same time, though, for the Maple Leafs to make it happen, they'd have to have money come off the books. And I just don't see how this deal would be feasible for either team. I know sometimes it's fun to think about players returning to where they used to play. And I wouldn't completely rule out the possibility that maybe in a year or so, Bozak could return on a cheap contract like we saw with Jason Spezza. But that would be about it. I don't see the Leafs making this acquisition. It just doesn't work money-wise. And it doesn't make sense for them to give up a young asset for one year of an aging veteran. So let me know your thoughts. Should the Maple Leafs be looking to add a veteran center iceman? Is Jason Spezza their guy? Uh, or should they look to acquire a player like Tyler Bozak, obviously somebody with a cheaper contract. Let me know your thoughts there. From the Blues perspective, though, I can understand why they might want to move him, but a couple of other moves that might be more likely, in my opinion, if they can move on from Alex Dean. Uh, he still has a year left at $5 million as well. Uh, he certainly played a lower role for them, a good role player. Uh, again, a player who 
adds value, leadership, experience, but a luxury they can no longer afford. Uh, the other possibility, as well as I mentioned before, is I don't see them hanging on to both Jordan Bennington and Jake Allen. Uh, they both played well this year. Bennington is likely going to get a longer-term contract, become the goalie of the present and future here for this team. Uh, and I just don't see a situation where they want to keep Jake Allen on making four plus million dollars as a backup goalie. When there are other teams out there who I can imagine would be having interest, especially uh, I thought in my opinion, he played a lot better this year. I think his trade value would be up, especially if he gets a chance to play in the playoffs at all. I can see the Blues doing that and you know saving themselves over four million dollars that way. And it might make more sense than moving Bozak. And obviously we'll see what the Blues do, but they do need to shed salary. And the Maple Leafs just don't seem to be the right partner for them to make that happen so let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and we'll continue discussing further if you're new to the channel consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it i'd appreciate it if you did as always thank you for watching and i will catch you next time